What up everybody? Back again with our volume unit. Today we're going to be finding the volume of irregular rectangular prisms without unit cubes. Let's open up the box and see what is happening today. Our objective today, today I will be able to find the volume of an irregular prism without cubes by decomposing it into regular rectangular prisms. So very similar to what we did last lesson, except now the prisms won't be made of unit cubes. They're just going to be rectangular prisms with the dimensions labeled. Our key thought, again, is that volume is additive. If I have two prisms right here and I find the volume of each of them, okay, so volume is going to equal area of the base times the height. I know I don't have the area of the base, so I did 5 times 10, which is 50. My height is 9, so my volume for this one is going to be 450 cubic meters, okay. And over here, I have a length and a width of 5 and 10, that's 50. So if I do my volume formula, I could do area of the base times the height, and I'm going to get 150 cubic meters. If I then took those prisms and put them together into a prism that looked like this, if I wanted to find the total volume of this prism, I would just have to add the two pieces together. So here you can very clearly see the blue prism. And here I'm going to do purple because I don't have a red highlighter, would be the red prism. And so when I put those together, I find that my volume is 450 plus 150, okay, which is going to be 600 cubic meters, okay. So volume is additive. If you take two prisms and put them together, you can just add the volume of both of those prisms and it will tell you the total volume of your new prism. Now the only difference between today and yesterday is our irregular prisms are not going to be made out of cubes. So you're going to have to use the dimensions that they give you, all right, but other than that, it's the same exact process. Our steps are the exact same. So first thing, we're going to decompose the prisms. So I'm going to use my highlighter. You could break them apart using a pencil, okay, or a pen, really make those lines nice and dark. You're going to find the volume of each prism, and then you're going to add the volumes together. Now, yesterday we had the option of just counting the cubes sometimes if it was a smaller shape. Today there are no cubes to count, so we're going to have to use our volume formula for each of our prisms before we add them together. So our I do problem says, what is the volume of the figure below? So I'm just going to write down the volume is blank, and I know my units are millimeters, so I'm going to put cubic millimeters. So for this one, they already have a line splitting the two prisms. For some of you who live in some states, you might have to draw this line yourself. Some states, like North Carolina, give you the two separate prisms and they already split it apart for you. Either way, you're using the same strategy. This just makes it easier because the prisms are already split. So what I like to do is I like to label these prisms. I'm going to do prism A and prism B. And I'm going to write down my volume formula for prism A is area of the base times the height. And then over here I can do volume of prism B is area of the base times the height. So for volume A, I'm going to use this vertex as my peace sign. I'm going to find my height. I'm going to find my width and I'm going to find my length all from the same spot. So I don't have the area of the base, but I do have my length, or sorry, I do have my width. My width was two. Now for my length, I have to do some thinking here. I don't see a number here, but when I look opposite parallel, I, I see from this point to this point was five. So from here to here, that's going to be five. If I find this piece, I can now add these together. So if I look opposite parallel, I don't see anything here. I don't see anything there. I keep looking opposite parallel and I get this section to be four. So if this part of the prism is five and this part of the prism is four, I add those together for a length of nine. Okay, so sometimes you have to do a little bit of work and add the two parts of the sides together. So my length is going to be nine and my height is going to be six. So if I solve this out, I'm just going to use my order of operation knowledge. Okay, 18 times six is 108 cubic millimeters. Okay, but I'm not done yet because that's only prism A. Now I need to go back and find the volume of prism B. And again, I'm going to use purple for red because I don't have a red highlighter, which I guess I could just use purple pen next time, but oh well. Let's make this prism blue so I can very clearly see the two prisms, even though they're already separated. Okay, it's nice to have a little color in your life and visualize that. So now I need to find my length, my width, and my height of prism B. So here I can find my height, my length, and my width all from the same spot. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to cross over the prism. Sometimes people use this line back here, but if you look at this, Prism B ends right here and prism A starts right here. So if you use this line right here as your length, you're actually crossing over prisms. 
do not cross over prisms. You're only looking for the length of B. So my height right here, if I look opposite parallel is six, okay? My width is gonna be four, because I looked opposite parallel, and my length right here is going to be six. So I don't have the area of the base, which means I'm gonna have to use my length times width. So I'm gonna do six times four, and I had six layers of that. Six times four is 24, and then 24 times six is 144 cubic millimeters. Okay, so now I have the volume of both of them. Let's stop and have a test taking minute. <laughs> If this were a multiple choice test, do you know what two of the answers would be? One of them would be 108, and one of them would be 144. These people who make this test know that if you don't organize your information, they can trick you. If you have your information organized, you know you're not done yet because you want to know the volume of the entire prism. But some people would just pick 108 because they have it on their paper and they get so excited that they finally have a number on the test that's on their paper. You're not done until you've answered the statement. So we gotta add these together and we're gonna get the total volume to be 250 two cubic millimeters. And now, if this is a multiple choice test, you could find your answer. You have to stick with it through the end. Let's try we do. So here we have a uh, fish tank, and it says how many cubic feet of water can the fish tank hold? So we're gonna say, I'll write it up here, the fish tank can hold blank cubic, inch, cubic feet of water. So this one is not split apart. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and split it apart. I'm gonna split it apart vertically, okay? And I'm actually gonna have three different prisms here. And I'm gonna go ahead and highlight them, make this one yellow, make this one purple, and I'll make this one blue. So now, instead of finding the volume of two prisms, we're gonna be finding the volume of three prisms. Prism A, prism B, prism C, okay? So volume of prism A is gonna be area of the base times the height. I like to split it into different columns. Volume of prism B is area of the base times the height. And my volume of prism C is going to be area of the base times the height. So for prism A, I can find my length, my width, and my height all from my, this vertex right here. So I call that the peace sign. So I'm gonna do volume of A equals three times three times four. Now I'm just solving this like a multiplication equation. Three times three is nine. And then I have four layers of nine, which is going to be 36 cubic feet. Now for prism B, okay, I have my length right here. I'll do my P sign right here and my width. Now I know all the way up and down was four, okay? But I don't wanna cross over prisms. Remember, you don't cross over prisms. But if I know that this part is two and the total height of this yellow part was four, so from here to here is two, that means from here to here also has to be two because that would be four total. So my height for prism B is going to be two. I know my length is going to be five, so I'll go ahead and put that in. And then my width I don't have, but I look opposite parallel, and that's going to be three. So for my volume prism for B, I'm gonna be doing five times three. That's gonna give me an area of the base of 15. And then I'm gonna multiply, I have two layers of 15, so it's gonna be 30 cubic feet for prism B. And then for prism C, I'm gonna use my P sign right here. I'm gonna go all the way down, okay? If you went at this vertex and you only did two, that wouldn't be the entire prism, okay? You're only doing half of that prism. So you want to make sure you're doing the whole prism, but you're not crossing over into another prism, okay, if that makes sense. So if I look opposite parallel, my height here is gonna be four, my length is gonna be three, and then my width over here, I keep looking opposite parallel, and that's also going to be three. To find the volume of prism C, I'm doing three times three, and my height was four. Actually the exact same thing as prism A. So my volume for that is gonna be 36 cubic feet. And then again, I need to add all of these together. So I have 36, plus 30 is going to be 66, and then I add another 36 to that, and my answer is going to be 102 
cubic feet. That is the total once I added all of my ear rate or all of my little prisms together. So I come back up here and I say the fish tank can hold 102 cubic feet of water. All right, so we have our U try here. You can go ahead and pause the video and solve it and then push play when you're ready to check it. If you're not ready yet, you can do it with us as I do it. So hopefully you just paused it and now you're checking your answer. So my statement should say, um, the figure has blank total cubic meters. And again, because you know that volume is cubic units, you know that they're really asking you for the volume. So I'm gonna go ahead and label this one prism A and this one prism B. I won't highlight them because I know most of you don't have a highlighter, so I wanna try to solve it like you did. Um, so what I would do is I'd really kind of break it apart with my pencil, make it nice and dark right here. And then I'd separate it into volume of prism A equals area of the base times the height. And then volume of prism B also equals area of the base times the height. And then I like to split it apart right here. Okay. So for A, I would have probably used this corner right here as my peace sign. And I would have found my height to be six, my length to be seven, and my width to be three. So to find the area of the base, I had to do decompose this into length times width. So I'm going to do seven times three. And then I had six layers of that. Seven times three is 21. 21 times six is 126 cubic meters. All right, now I need to find volume of prism B. So when I do that, I probably would again, let me move this, used this part right here, this front vertex as my peace sign. I can see that my length is 10, my height is four, and then my width is already labeled for me as eight. So when I break apart the area of the base and the length times width, I'm gonna be doing 10 times eight, and then my height was four layers of that. So 10 times eight is 80. Now if I do area of the base, 80 times the height four, I'm gonna get 320 cubic meters and now I need to realize that volume is additive and I need to add up the volume of A and the volume of B and that will tell me the volume of the total prism and my answer should be 446 cubic meters because remember you have to write volume as cubic units remember don't cross over the prisms find the length the width and the height of each individual prism and use that to find the volume. Thank you so much for checking us out today. If you have done all our lessons up to this point, you are ready for the mastery check and you can go ahead and look that up on our YouTube page. We would love to have you try that out and test your skills. As always, we really appreciate you. If you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. We'd love to have you join us on those and join our Instructor Beats family. Again, thank you so much. Instructor Beats, out!